So it is June 3rd and we have been busy at work on the place here so uh, it's going to look a little bit different. Mainly I wanted to share a video with you guys today about how we are using chop and drop to maintain these uh, food forest type beds that we have here. Three beds I'm going to go over with you. The first one being this one here that has this Florina apple tree, a choke cherry, a salmon berry and some other things. It's definitely up in zone one of the yard. Um, so this apple tree was a lot taller than what it is. It was also kind of leaning over. So we used a bit of a rubber hose and a T-post there, you can see, to pull it back upright and then also gave it a prune so it wasn't so top heavy. This is supposed to be a compact apple tree, so um, just kind of pruned it back into shape. But we're getting this bed um, kind of under control using just some chop and drop. So uh, if you've been watching the videos on our channel, you've seen me harvest the lemon balm from here and the mint from over here. And um, I've talked a little bit about how I sort of when we first moved in here, had to uh, really beat this lemon balm back into <laughs> submission because it will just take over. But I like to have it because I harvest it for tea and um, tinctures and things like that, mainly tea. So what I've decided to do here is I'm gonna just let this grow, um, mint, or lemon balm on this side, mint on this side, I have kind of hacked a path here and done mainly just chop and drop where basically what we do is um, I use a scythe which I will show you um, and grab handfuls and cut it off at basically at the ground level and drop what we don't want. Um, normally I would be harvesting it but you can see that there's just a lot of buttercup that has come up in here uh, that was allowed to spread for the last couple years while we were gone um, and so I really you know it's starting to go to seed which is really not good um, I need to pull those flowers out and throw them in the burn pile but uh, we're working on getting a little bit of definition here it's it is a food forest bed but it's also part of just an edible landscape so I want it to look have have a little bit of definition so we've got the the apple tree there. We've got some herbs down here. There's some oregano. We have this a little huckleberry bush there, mainly for looks. We have this purple choke cherry. It is starting to set some berries. We'll see if we get actual fruit this year. It doesn't look like that's going to happen though. I never have actually gotten fruit off of this. Before we left, we did plant a little bit of um, asparagus in here that has com was completely overgrown. But since we're um, starting to just kind of reclaim the territory and get some of these um, choke cherry suckers out and transplant those elsewhere, we have discovered that there is actually there's at least three asparagus plants in he in here that. Um, have survived and hopefully we'll uh, just have a, a little bit more chance to establish now. We have this, um, I've been calling it a thornless Marion berry, but it's actually a Logan berry. It's doing really well. We have starts rooting down there in containers that I've showed you guys before. And then we have this uh, little patch of daylilies. So you can see the buds are starting to develop here, and these are actually edible. We like to use these in stir fries, and they come out the same time as garlic scapes. So um, once the buds get a bit, a little bit bigger, once they're just about ready to open, we'll pick those off along with some garlic scapes and put those in a stir fry. But yeah, the chop and drop is really starting to help that take shape. This bed over here was one that I was extremely overwhelmed by. I didn't want to take it out altogether because it does have some garlic and onions in here. And um, while the garlic might not be uh, 
super well developed this year because it's had so much competition and it hasn't really been fed. Um, I would like to retain those varieties. So I'm hoping to at least get seed garlic that I can replant this fall. Um, and I've been going back and forth about what I want to do if I want to sheet mulch it and just do away with it all or if I want to pull the weeds which honestly there's just too much to do around here I don't have time to pull all those weeds so what I did yesterday was I went through with the scythe um, it's just a little hand scythe um, and I basically just went around and grabbed handfuls of weeds and chopped them and dropped them. So now they're gonna act as mulch on top of the beds and the garlic remains. This is a before bed. I'm not sure if you guys can see that very well. So that one, that side over there is what the weeds were looking like. And this side over here has been tackled. So I kind of ran out of steam yesterday. So um, I'll work on uh, doing this other bed maybe this evening or something when it cools off a little bit. The lavage is doing really well. It's going to flower here in a bit. There's the echinacea, chamomile. We've got a currant in there. There's some um, volunteer parsley back over here that I've shown you guys. Um, but I just mainly just wanted to show you how we've used chop and drop there. And that's also how we're maintaining these beds. So these um, have some perennial artichokes going on here. We have a ginkgo tree there that we use for uh, tea. There's some volunteer barrage coming up, which looks a lot like these baby artichokes, but has more rounded leaf. Um, but just to keep the weeds under control here, I'm basically just pulling them and laying them on the surface as you see here. So yesterday I went around and did a little bit of chop and drop editing. I pulled all the weeds that we don't want, allowing the plants that we do want to remain. And the weeds kind of serve as a top dressing. Those will just be worked in and once I do get a chance to get some compost or wood chips over here we'll just put that right on top of there and that will just add to the soil amendments as it breaks down. Uh, I did the same thing over here. I did a bunch of um, pulling of weeds and dropping them. You can really see it over here in the asparagus. So. I don't want this stuff to get overrun, so I pulled out the bracken fir and just laid that on the surface and all the weeds that were getting bigger and starting to crowd out the kale and this is evening primrose, got a cabbage going there, this is some valerian, use the root for medicinal preparations. So yeah, you can see how we're just being selective about the plants that we allow to keep and you know <laughs> normally I maintain these beds um, by adding top dressing every year and that keeps the weeding way back but being that I was not the one managing it for the last couple years the renters didn't do um, really any top dressing and evidently just let all the weeds go to seed so um, we're definitely having to get it under control again this year, but I don't have time to go around and pull every weed, so this chop and drop method is really helping the stuff that I want to stay just kind of take definition and get bigger, and hopefully that stuff is going to get ahead of the weeds and shade that stuff out. Um, yeah, that's there you have it, how we are using a permaculture chop and drop technique to uh, get these weedy, um, food foresty, edible landscape beds back under control. So that's basically what we've got going uh, the last couple days and how we're working on getting this place back under the control. The veggie beds are doing really well, so they're doing good. 
I just planted some more uh, seeds today. Uh, let's see what we got here. Different kinds of squash. So I've got um, summer squash, yellow and green zucchini, uh, some acorn squash, butter bush, like a compact butternut squash, spaghetti squash, some uh, just slicing cucumbers, some more broccoli, and uh, little packs of uh, clumps of romaine lettuce that I'll be able to separate and plant out. So that's my planting for June 3rd. Again, a little later than I normally do, but we're just getting back to it since we, we haven't even been back for a month yet. So I'm happy that we're as far along as we are. And then this is what I've planted um, uh, May 12th. So we've got the dill is coming up really nice. So what, it's been three weeks? So the dill, the uh, basil is coming up really good. This is a gourmet lettuce mix um, that I'll actually separate out and to uh, plant those as heads instead of just cutting lettuce. And we've got kale, some chard, some beets, and this broccoli did not germinate as well as I would have liked. So planted a little bit more today. But the cabbage transplants are doing really well. They look a little bit wilty, but that happens in the afternoon sun. Tomatoes are looking well. The peas are looking really good. My um, beans actually got hit by slugs. I'm pretty sure that it was baby slugs that hammered these. And so I put down a bit of iron phosphate, that um, organic um, OMRI approved sluggo that is necessary in our climate for sure. I've never one year been able to um, garden without using sluggo. Um, but then I also replanted a, that row of beans over there because that pretty much just got hit the hardest. I don't think any of that row is going to survive. Peas are coming up really good. The one um, I put in one green summer squash and one yellow summer squash and those are doing really well. The spinach is doing really well. That little baby asparagus is still in there. So expanding the patch. The greenhouse is looking really good. So we got the tomatoes and peppers in the ground and the soaker hose relayed. So as of today, um, have I said July 3rd? It's June 3rd. Did I say June 3rd or July 3rd? Anyways, it's June 3rd. So we've got these little finger um, eggplants that are going to make long skinny eggplants. A variety of peppers. Some chamomile that I'm trying to germinate. That's a hard one because the seed, the seed is so fine. Um, a couple little um, cucumbers and containers that have not germinated yet. And we've got our greenhouse tomatoes there. And I just put in the ground today some cucumber transplants that we picked up. These only need to be thinned. I'm going to make sure that they all make the transition because I did split together, split apart one block one container but then I'll thin those out to one plant for each spot here's another chop and drop bed that we're just chopping and dropping to get it under control it does not look like much at the moment but it will oh and I almost forgot to show you this is my scythe that I use so I just put a quick edge on that inside part using a file and then I'll always make sure that I'm wearing gloves and then go along, uh, grab a handful, whack. So it's nice, this edge will um, get around the uh, stalks that you wanna keep really well. Uh, it's gonna be really hard to show you with one hand, but I can try. So, This is what I mean, how you can kind of get right up next to like, the garlic stalk. Cut stuff off right there at the ground level. Let's see if I can show you on some taller weeds here. It's hard to do one-handed. So, there's that. Oh, I love foxglove. 
It's such a pretty flower, but not meant to be in the garden. So basically just like that. Um, it's easier to do with two hands. So, so here's the garlic here. Here's one here. I'm just going to get the scythe in there at the, right at the ground level and pull it towards me. That's it. And then stuff just lays over like so. There's some more easy stuff to get to. And just lay it down. All right, but I make a habit of not working out in the direct sunlight. My skin is too fair for that. So I'm gonna head back in. I'll do this rest of this bed using the scythe and gloves later on this evening once I have some shade. So there you have it. Uh, that's the garden tour for June 3rd, and also just an update on getting these uh, weedy food forest beds under control. And thanks for watching. Um, are you guys doing food forest and edible landscape? Um, what do you do? Do you just let it go and let the weeds uh, proliferate? <laughs> or is there something that you do to manage and keep it looking nice and under control. I'd be curious and uh, let me know what you guys are doing, what's working, what's what, what's not working, how's your garden growing here in the, uh, we're in the Pacific Northwest, June 3rd. Can't wait to see it explode. All right, I need to get back inside. I got more work to do. Oh, hey, if you, if you found this video helpful, give a like and a subscribe and we're gonna keep more updates coming and um, we just about have the house all uh, caught up on maintenance and whatnot, so we're going to be starting up our Airbnb here pretty soon. And uh, so if you're looking for a place to stay out here in the Pacific Northwest and want to come see some organic no-till permaculture gardens and maybe eat some breakfast from it, then stop by and say hi. Bye.